Hello everybody, welcome to Cryptonomy. My name is Mo. I'm a data and computer scientist. I've been a crypto investor for the past six years uh, and I was able to turn a small portfolio into six figures this cycle. So if you want to learn some of uh, the strategy I use and some of the mistakes, then maybe watch this video. And if you like it, please subscribe and like the video. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is uh, the moving averages of Bitcoin, uh, specifically the 50, 100, and 200 week moving averages. You can also pull up the 20 week moving average, but um, for this video, we're just not going to include it to keep it simple. Um, the first thing you notice when uh, checking these moving averages is there's a structure that always plays out uh, during the bear markets of every Bitcoin cycle that has happened so far. And so far, we're following that structure. Now, here, we were able to predict this bounce, right? In, in a previous video, uh, Bitcoin re relief rally, right? Uh, if you go watch it, we were kind of betting on, on Bitcoin getting a bounce of the 100 week SMA, uh, not only because of that, but there was also some other factors in play um, and it just all fit in the puzzle, right? Um, right now it's playing out so far so nicely. Uh, we're gonna, through these moving average and previous cycles, we're gonna see how high can Bitcoin go and how does it interact between these moving averages uh, based on history and data, right? The first thing you can notice usually um, from previous cycles is the first bounce comes on the 50 week SMA, right? You get a bounce here, uh, we got it here as well. If you, you can see it even more clearly when you go to the daily, right? You got one bounce, and then a second one before we broke, right to the 100 week SMA. And what history says is we are going up to retest the 50 week SMA. Um, in some cycles, we actually just play around and touch either the lower one and go down or the quite the opposite, you play around and touch the upper one and go down and then eventually break the 100 week SMA and you drop to the 200 week SMA. In previous cycle, we even dropped below the 200 week SMA and we were, you know, uh, consolidating for some time under that moving average. So if we switch to the weekly and we go see actually the previous cycle, we see something very similar played out to what's playing out right now. We got a bounce of the 50 week SMA, dropped down to the 100 week SMA, got rejected by the 50 week SMA, and then finally broke down the 100 week SMA to test the 200 week SMA, right? And here's the cycle where we actually got rejected by it and consolidated under it for some time before the bull market regained control and we went higher, right? It's interesting to see that this has happened every cycle in one form or another, right? Um, but the thing is that we need to be considering right now is that we're actually heading to the 100 week SMA. And the biggest crash usually comes in the whole cycle, the bear market, is once you finally break the 100 week SMA. That's usually the biggest crash from here to here in the whole cycle. And it happens mid cycle to late cycle. So if we go and analyze previous cycles to see if the same pattern has actually played out or not, if we see in the 2017 18 crash, we did something very similar. The first thing is you bounce one time off the 50 week SMA, you retested it, bounced on top again, just like we've seen the cycle, but on a much smaller scale, right? The four hour here, it happened on the weekly. Um, after that, as we said, sometimes we touch the 100 week SMA and sometimes we don't, right? But we do touch one of them by the least in every bear market cycle. <clears throat> so in here, we actually got rejected by the 50 week SMA before we consolidated a little bit between the two moving averages till we finally broke below the 100 week SMA and the period, the 200 week SMA actually actually as support and very good support. That's where we got the 2019 rally, right? Now, the drop downs from the 100 week SMA to the bottom of that range, usually the bottom happens right after we drop, we break the support of 100 week SMA. That's when we actually 
bottom up during every bear market. So I think unlocking this bear market will have to include observing these moving averages very, very closely. That's, I think, when we can anticipate and speculate on the biggest crash, uh, be prepared for it, and maybe catch the bottom to deploy some capital into Bitcoin uh, in, in very, very, very attractive levels, right? Of course, nothing said in this video is uh, financial advice. It's for educational purposes only. Uh, before making any financial decisions, please do make sure to do your own research and take this as just um, one piece of the puzzle to your investment strategy, right? Um, of course, there are a lot more things that I look at into to try and be a profitable speculator in the market. But this one is definitely on my top priority radar right now. Uh, because the way Bitcoin dances around these moving averages is, I would say, somewhat probabilistically predictable in a way, right? Of course, uh, nothing is sure in the market. Uh, nobody knows where anything is going. And for all we know, Bitcoin can change uh, course tomorrow, right? Uh, but so far, we're playing out. So, if it's, uh, you know, follow the trend till the end when it bends, or if it's not broken, don't fix it. And so far, betting on the four year cycle and past bitcoin behaviors have given many investors a lot of opportunities in the market right um so if it worked out for me in the past this is how i'm going to try and approach it uh, next cycle and this bear market as well um if we go look actually at the previous bear market right the first one in around 2014 a very similar pattern actually plays out again we test the 50 week SMA, we bounce of it, and then we break below it. Once we break below it, we have to touch either the support or resistant, right? The support or resistant, uh, the 50 or 100 week. In this scenario, we actually went down to the 100 week SMA, uh, tried to retest the 50 week SMA, but we did not go through and we finally broke below it and we tested the 200 week SMA. And you can even argue that we went below it, right? So pretty interesting stuff. Um, we seem to be finding the bottom shortly after we break from the 100 week SMA and we get very near the 200 week SMA. That's, that's my bottom range where I'm hopefully gonna get some orders in, right? Uh, of course, um, not financial advice, do your own research where you want to buy in and other fact consider them before uh, taking any advice online you know um so pretty interesting stuff and one thing we can actually notice every time we break from the 200 week SM, sorry 100 week sma is that the crashes in term in percent terms is pretty predictable at least with the few data points that we have so this one's seen uh, around 58% if you round it up and the 2018 crash when we broke from the 100 week SMA we've seen around a 50 or something right Let's see it so 51 if you measure it from there and similarly here right around 51 so if you put them all in a form we can see to see some correlations or not right then we do see that crashes usually happen between 51 to 58 percent once we drop below the 100 week sma that's if we are of course this 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 100 week sma is going to continue maybe going up or even start to shift plateauing and then shift downward but if we were to break of course i don't think we're gonna break it yet hopefully but if we were to break it from this level then that would put us around 40k right interesting but usually breaking the 100 week sma happens mid-cycle to late cycle so when the first one was in december 2014 the second one was may 2018 right and the third one was november 2022 I doubt we're going to break the 100 week SMA in November or December of 2026, right? Uh, because 
usually bear markets last around 365 days from the peak based on history right three cycles that would put us around 364 say that would put us in around september 2026 end of september even so october early october i think that this would play out similar to last cycle or the 2018 cycle actually where we broke it in may now of course it can be april can be march just i think it will play around there right the first to second quarter of 2026 um, that would make sense to leave us some room for breather right here and we consolidate a little bit before maybe retesting the top or something and then maybe crashing right there is very possible similarly to here right we consolidate a little bit around these lines we form we form a range here here we formed a, a large range as well and right there now i do believe there's a chance that we actually break the 200 week sma similarly to last cycle and that's if, because if you notice cycle to cycle the the extension from the 50 week is getting smaller right especially you can see it here but uh, the extension from the 200 week sma and downward is getting quite larger right so here we just touched it right uh, here we formed a range right below it here we were having a lot of space on top of the 50 week sma here it was smaller here it was smaller right so it does make sense to expect the 50 week sma to break down at some point and form a range below it and go up and of course this one will go up in time right so uh, those levels will be definitely higher later in the cycle anyway i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned some things um, let me know what you think about this analysis if you have some video ideas or some uh something to point out please leave it in the comment like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next video